the month field, your job would run January through March. Same thing for day of the month. So an asterisk or wildcard means it can run on any day of the month, but you can also restrict it or specify steppings such as every second day or every tenth day, for example, or every twentieth day. Same thing for hour. Perhaps you'd like your job to run 4 a.m. or perhaps 3 p.m. You can specify it here or you can specify a range. And you can also control the minute with which your job runs. And you may also influence a stepping on minutes to cause your job to run, let's say, every n number of minutes, every five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, so on and so forth. So this document's already commented to give us a sense of the scheduler. So that gives us an opportunity to define a job. So we can run a simple job, perhaps something that runs a little process like uptime, for example. Something very simple that will produce some output. So another task, define system-wide job. If it's a system-wide job, the simplest place to place it, if it's not going to run, let's say, once daily or, or monthly or weekly, is simply in ETC cron tab if it's system wide. So we'll be modifying ETC cron tab. So supposing we'd like to have a job, let's say uptime, run and send output to Root's home directory. We could simply include an entry that resembles the following. Supposing we wanted the job to run every minute. So in the first column, and the single quotes are not to be included, we'd include an asterisk, but because we want it to run every n number of minutes would use a forward slash one to divide the first column into every one or first or additional minute. So every one minute run the job. Then we'll continue every hour, so this should happen for every single hour, every day of the month, every month, every day of the week. So those are our five fields spelled out. Now we need to specify the job. Now this is where you normally reference a script or the command itself. Now, when defining cron tabs on a per user basis, you don't need to specify the username. But when you do on a system wide basis, you should specify the username. So here we should specify the user. Let's have the job run as the user Linux CBT. And then we'll specify the command. So the one slight difference between the system wide job and the per user job is the specification of the user with which to execute the job, but you don't have to specify because as you see in this example, you can indicate the schedule followed by the command, but optionally your system cron tab can include the user with whom to run the job so that you know to whom the job belongs. So let's take a look and we'll have Linux CBT run the uptime command. Now it always helps if you specify the fully qualified path. That way there is no confusion. So let's look for uptime and it's in user bin which is a path that's included by default in cron job jobs, but let's just be sure by prefixing it with user bin. And then we can send the output perhaps into the user's home directory, home Linux CBT, and we'll simply call it uptime dot stat, for example. So this is a simple job that will run every one minute during our discussion. So let's place this into the system-wide cron table. And we'll paste this in this area. Any line that begins with a hash mark is a comment, so we'll include this as a comment. Temp job for classroom user. Now, once we save the changes, at the next minute, when cron wakes up, so in roughly 50, 40 seconds, when cron wakes up, it will have seen that etc cron tab, let's stat it, has been changed. Relative to our current time, it was changed at 15.09 and 15 seconds with n number of nanoseconds precision. So it'll know that there's been a change. And then it will cache the new etc cron tab settings and be prepared to process the job. Now we'll see if it runs immediately at the next minute, which will come in 11 seconds, or at the 11th minute, or 1511 momentarily. So now we're three seconds off. Now let's take a look at Linux CBT's home directory to see whether or not it has written the uptime file. 
and indeed it has. So it ran it at that minute, 1510. Let's cat the contents of Linux CBT uptime.stat. And there we see the uptime. So every minute, that little job will continue to append to the uptime.stat file, giving us data that we could possibly parse using some other process, perhaps ultimately uploading it to a spreadsheet or otherwise. Now that's a job that's going to run every one minute. Now the same job could be specified on a per user basis using the cron tab utility. So this runs every one minute. And by now it's possibly run again. Let's do a date to see if it's 1511. And it's a few seconds off. That means if we now cat the content by now, we should see two entries. Now we see the two entries. So it just hit. So there's a second entry and the utilization is roughly the same slightly off in the one minute mark and the 15 minute mark. So let's take a look at our notes. Define per user job. So the same job to be defined on a per user basis means we'll invoke crontab with the E option to edit the crontab or table for the user Linux CBT. Now you can do this as a user root or as the user Linux CBT. So let's do it both ways. Crontab E is the user, so let's just note run as user principal, which means the user Linux CBT, will propel us into the default editor, giving us the ability to specify the job. And we'll do it sans the username because it isn't, isn't required. So let's find a shell where we're the user Linux CBT and momentarily we'll be able to run Crontab. And perhaps we'll set a different stepping. So Crontab. E. And by the way, let's just do a which so that you see where cron tab is located. User bin. It's accessible to everyone. So long as you're not listed in cron.deny or you are actually omitted or you're not omitted from cron.allow, you'll be able to submit jobs to the scheduler. So cron tab E. Now this propels us into the default editor VI. If VI is not your thing, then export the editor variable setting it equal to an, an editor that's in your path such as nano then rerun cron tab e now it propels us into nano so we'll paste the entry and remove the username because it's unrequired when specifying the job as a user so this will run every minute now supposing we wanted to differentiate the file so that we know that it's running so uptime dot linux cbt dot stat to differentiate and this will also run every one minute now let's confirm in 50 seconds or so cron will wake up and realize that there's been a change to the var spool cron tabs directory and we'll process the contents now if we look at the directory now you'll see that only uptime.stat with tab completion exists and as mentioned user entries are stored so let's take a look at var spool cron in var spool cron. So what you'll see here now is an entry for Linux CBT, which only Linux CBT and root may interact with. And if we cat the contents, in fact, let's file the contents first. It's just a text file. And if we cat the contents, you'll see it's the job verbatim as we entered it as the user Linux CBT. Now let's compare the time. We should have in about 10 seconds, cron D waking up and creating the job. And as the user Linux CBT, let's LSLTR, we should see momentarily uptime.linuxcbt.stat let's specifically look at upstar and indeed there's the new file 71 bytes let's cat uptime.linuxcbt.stat and indeed the entry has been created let's see if it reflects uptime.stat which ran at the same time as well so let's cat that and let's see what the load average was for 15.14.03 and notice 32, 25, 12, the settings are identical. But of course, the one that's been running longer contains more data. You know, it's nicely formatted. It can be parsed using, let's say, awk. We've already looked at awk, so you can parse this out with awk. For example, supposing you want to parse this, you'd simply awk, and the field separator is comma, and you'd want to, let's say, print. So let's go ahead and indicate our single colon, and that's going to be curly brace, print me let's say field number one from and we actually inadvertently didn't get the single quote there 
from our uptime file from Linux CBT, and there is the first column. And of course, we can then print additional columns. Let's cat the file again just to see what may be of interest. And that's uptime.stat, but perhaps uptime.linuxcbt.stat contains two. So supposing we wanted the timestamp as well as the number of users connected to various TTYs and maybe the load average for one minute just to give us a sense. So what we could do, we now know that we need to get, in addition to column one, we want column two and column three to pull that information. So that's almost everything. So that brings us out and actually there should be a comma, let's see, three users and we've got one, two, so that's the second we don't want that one so let's